Hey, what's up, guys? This is Fire Skull Affair. So, something I noticed online and in the game in general is a lot of people have great informational videos that explain a lot about the game, but there's really not much out there regarding T Wars. Um, when you get a new guy in to the house, he's always asking all these questions. You know, no one's really done an informational video on how T War works. So, just a base overview. So, that's what we're going to go over today is how it works. What should you be doing in general and all of that good stuff? So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing to keep in mind is it's really hard to do in a normal battle. So I'm just going to do it in the fort that we own right now. Um, on a map, whenever you load into a game on Territory Wars. Well, actually here, let's back up. First things first, Territory Wars takes place in the open world. So in order to compete, you have to actually walk up to the village or town. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So I left the village. I have all my troops with me. Normally... You're going to want to bring artillery as well if you're running infantry. Or if you're running double cavalry, you really want to be fast so you can field or focus on the village fights. So you're not going to have time to place artillery if you're using a lot of horses. So I wouldn't bother with it all too much. So the way it works is you leave, you group up, you head out with your friends, and you get in these battles. So in order to get ruling house, you have to declare on the fief. And have enough influence. Oh, here. So, in order to get influence, you can either place a field camp, which will give you 50 influence. An outpost, which will give you a lot of influence and basically guarantee you the ruling house. Or the easiest thing to do is fight over these influence nodes. So the thing you want to prioritize is making sure you're attacking the, and you're holding the node that gives the most influence. Like these two right now, one has 225 and one has 150. So the priority should definitely be this copper mine right now, right, if you're attacking it. So you go in there, you take that copper mine, and then you should have enough influence to attack the thief. Um, now when that comes up, it'll show up in war inf info right now. So cohorts have already decked on us, and I imagine we'll see them show up at our fort for the fight. Uh, this Saturday Now in the battles itself, it'll pop up here When you click on the village or fort or whatever and you just enter join battle uh, You can have up to 15 people in the battle and mustering so there's an inner queue and an outer queue Anyone after the 15 that enter and are in the battle will be sent to the queue basically called mustering now that's the reserve force. So as soon as someone on your team dies in that battle, you will start to load in and you can get your troops and go attack and get into the fight with your friends. I'm not sure how many you can have in the inner queue. I think it's five. Um, the best thing to do when you're in that inner queue is you can actually spectate the battle and press Z. So if you're in comms with your friends or your house, Press that Z button, get that overview in, and make sure you're doing important callouts for things that you see, but your team can't because they're focused on other things. In the outer queue, uh, you can have as many as you want. Uh, normally, the aim that you want to go for is a full 15 to start the battle, and then 10 mustering is a solid stack loadout. Now, that'll give you enough time to cycle through players if you die, and you'll never really run out of people. Or you shouldn't, unless it's a really rough fight. Now, let's talk about the different types of fights. Mainly, it's going to be cities and villages. Now, these are two very different play styles. When it comes to these forts, you're going to run into mostly heavy infantry and shock troops to try and take the wall. Um, you're definitely going to need cab there to run over kill boxes or anything that you've disabled. And it is nice to charge in and get that good damage. So you want a good mix of troops in there. You'll see some flamethrowers, some falconettis. However, when it comes to the little village fights like we have over here. Let's see if I can get over there. 
Village fights are a completely different playing field. Village fights are cavalry and counter cavalry. You're not going to want to be rocking a whole lot of infantry because it's a lot of open field. You're going to want to be fast. You're going to want to be mobile. And one thing you should keep in mind with all of this is never, ever, ever, ever bring archers to T-Wars. There's never a spot for it. It's always going to be useless. Um, and I'm pretty sure the mass majority of CB and house officers in any house will agree with me there. So you're always going to want to have pikes. You're going to want to have ranged. And then you're going to want to have cavalry in these village fights. The best artillery to use in the village fights is going to be hawaches and culverins. Now, Hawatches are really good against cavalry because they're basically a, a extra musket squad that you can set up to lay into them. And culverins to counter their artillery. If you do all those things and work together as a team, you should be golden. Um, back to the city fights, though. It's going to be a lot of mortars. So you're going to have a good mix of artillery in there. Uh, you're going to want to have epic ballistas or higher i wouldn't bother with lower tier ballistas they just don't do a whole lot cannons are good for blowing up units and maybe counter arty but if you want to counter arty the best thing you can use is a culverin because they are very accurate and pretty quick firing mortars are essential in city fights they're probably the best artillery you can use because you can lob them over walls and get some insane angles to really disable their fortifications and then move in with your team and run them over. Now let's talk about comms for a second. Most people will be operating out of some sort of voice channel. It'll be Discord for the most part. Everyone in the fight needs to be in your Discord channel so you can actually communicate with your team. You don't want to clutter the comms though, so you never want to say, oh, there's a guy over here, he's on X, he's killing me. Nothing like that. You really want to leave that out of the Discord channel because it will clutter the comms and get you killed. What you want to focus on are important callouts, like cavalry coming up to the X point, or fire skull is rushing X. You never want to use I in a game. You have 25 people in a match, no one knows who I is, right? So always try to use your username when in the fights and important callouts. The best thing you can do is relate it to where you are on the map or uh, cardinal directions. Callouts are always going to want to be based on the mini map. Tab left, tab right, up, south, stuff like that. Never base it on what direction you're facing, right? say someone called this out right based on the direction i'm facing oh he's left of me well if your teammate's around facing this way he's gonna think it's over here right so you want to make sure it's based on the mini map tab left tab right now when it comes to the actual fight itself here let me load in this be easier to explain in here So, unlike normal siege matches, there's an X point and two home points. Now, the way it works is X will usually be in the middle. So, X will be right where I'm standing on this map, and home will be all the way at the back there. The attacking team also has a home point that you can cap. The mechanics for this are a little different than they are on pub matches and in normal sieges. So, in normal sieges, if you get on the point, it's interrupted so they can't cap anymore that's not the way it works in here if you hop on it and cap it out to where it's a full ring and it start to capping the enemy team has to clear you and any units that are left on the point so even if you have like iron cap swordsmen on the point and they're not dead they will still cap for you it'll auto cap as well so once you capture it and you're running for honor the honor race so to call it i'll explain a little bit more on that later you can move on. So once you get that full ring around, it'll automatically start capping for you and you can move on. All right, so let's talk about honor racing for a second. A lot of times when grabbing land, um, especially in draw wars, you'll run into honor races. The way honor races work is there won't be any defenders. It'll just be the AI defending the village. And so what you wanna do is run through it as fast as you can. 
uh, whoever gets the most kills and the most points will get ruling house and it'll show up on the left of your screen or not ruling house sorry will be winning the honor race and it'll show up on the left of your screen who has what percentage and who's winning whoever has the most percentage at the end of the fight will get that fief one thing that's really overlooked and is really important is the AI hero kills actually count for a heck of a lot more points than the units themselves. So the best thing you can do is have your dudes with cavalry run through and kill as much as they can. And if you have someone on your team with infantry, have them stay on the point and stay on X to cap it out until it starts auto capping and then have them move on to the home point and set up fortifications around there to farm the, AI, farm the AI as soon as they come out. Another thing to keep in mind too is in these fights, uh, city fights, you won't spawn with the siege engines or the trebuchets. You actually have to get them from a field camp. Give me one sec. The way field camps work is they cost you a thousand prestige and you can put them anywhere on the open world map. A thing you have to keep in mind though is people can actually attack them and take them from you. The cool thing about field camps though is say that this was someone else's village, right? Say it was, I don't know, Celestial Dynasty or something, doesn't matter the house. You put a field camp outside and you can get artillery, resupply your troops, get food, and all the siege engines you need to attack this but it can also be fought over like any town or village so you should definitely allocate some defenders so they can't take it from you by back capping it uh, the trebuchets and the siege engines will also cost you prestige so like I explained in one of my previous videos getting that prestige in is very important for your house so definitely try to do your thief quests, get those dailies and weeklies in to help your house out. Now, when it comes to food on the open world, as long as you're in your homeland territory, so anywhere in this green area, I will resupply food automatically. You only need one food or more to attack something or join a pursuit. But as soon as you run out of food, you can't attack anything, or you can't start the battle. You can still be attacked, though, by enemy players on the open world and be, be fielded. So those are some very important things to keep in mind. Inns will also not be available during territory wars like they are any time of the week. So in order to resupply, you have to go to an allied city or village, or an independent, like this border fort or a trade colony, something like that, to resupply. And I think that'll be about it. I hope that gives you a base overview. I'm sorry I couldn't do any footage. I can't exactly queue up for a territory war. But it should give you a lot of good information to work with if you're new to the game on how territories work, how territory wars work. Uh, one more thing is you can either join the cohorts, but I would really recommend joining a house. A house is definitely a better experience, it gives you a good group of guys to hang out with, and a lot of houses do training and will get you up to scuff and teach you all the ins and outs of this game. And also having people to queue up with is, you know, makes the game fun and enjoyable. So I'd recommend joining a free house instead of cohorts. Like, I don't know, maybe Fire Nation for example, I heard they're a pretty cool house. Or maybe those guys who own... All this land, like maybe Fire Nation, I guess they own that as well. You could join them. That'd be pretty cool. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and keep tuned for more content.